Hello everyone, Zerna House, and today we're back with another episode of World of Division, Final Fantasy Brave Axios. We are on my main account today, we uh, thought it was easier to show you a couple of things in here rather than uh, my free to play. And yeah, no face today as well. Uh, it's a bit hard to uh, record off my iPad and uh, focus on the camera, so uh, that's how it's gonna be today. Without further ado, let's have a look at what's new this uh, week. 6th of October 2021. Let's have a look at the summons. We have a standard, actually, not even a standard banner. We have a 5 step, 10 time summon with VC guaranteed for the tune up time vision card. And this seems to be a pretty vi good vision card for water units. What does this card come with? So, party ability water unit man eater up, physical attack up by 25, water unit accuracy up by 13, and then once this card reaches level 99, you'll get water unit, unit attack res up by 20. If you equip this card to any water unit, you'll give that unit uh, magic attack resistance up by 10 and attack up by 10%. And if this card is equipped by either Krace or Lucia, that unit will get a further miss attack up by 20. So this card seems to be quite tailored for Krace, but uh, in reality, it's pretty good for uh, the majority of uh, physical water units, if you ask me. Uh, especially with the fact that it has accuracy and man eater by 25. That's nothing to scoff at, that's definitely nothing to um, set aside. So perhaps I might personally chase this card a bit down the line, uh, because I do have a relatively strong water team. Uh, and same goes with you, you know, if you've built Lara Croft's vision card this would be an extremely good pair up with uh, with that one they don't seem to overlap that much i think lara croft's card gives um to the whole party missile attack up and lock up so uh, i think this card will definitely uh, make Kray's a uh, power to be reckoned with and the same goes if you have lara croft and uh, christmas victor as well the following banner is pretty much standard banner, so we don't really want to worry about that. I don't think many people will want to chase this, and uh, I wouldn't blame you, since there's no incentive in doing so. And the banner below is the guaranteed vision card for 2000 paid banner. This is perhaps the banner that I will uh, be chasing, uh, but again, um, personally I feel like I really want this card, but then again, it is not vital, water has a lot of support, and um, I mean, I think this card is pretty good for the current event, and if you want to, and if you really like Craze, or if you've missed the Tomb Raider Vision card and you need to boost up your water party, this would be a good alternative. If you have both cards, both the Tune Up Time and the Tomb Raider Vision card, I think your water team will be close to unstoppable. And we'll have a look at later why. Now, we have the return of the 2000 paid Vision. 5 UR vision cards guaranteed. I do think this is a step down from what we've witnessed on the 1.5 anniversary. We had 10 UR vision cards guaranteed, so I'll probably skip this until the two year anniversary. I'll probably save up paid vision until then. And that is pretty much all the banners uh, that we have this time around, except for uh, obviously the guild banner for the tune up time shards. So, as I said, when you do the conversion, you know, five, a 25 million gil is a loss for only three vision card shards guaranteed. So I would find other avenues of getting the vision card unless you're actually on the last, you know, you're on probably four or five shards from finishing it and your stars are becoming too expensive. And then I will probably this will be my a contingency plan to max the vision card. Now let's have a look at what's at the shop. In here, what's really of interest is the 1.5 anniversary shop, so you'll get free growth eggs. And there's a couple of uh, gil, uh, actually, sorry, a couple of visual packs. Uh, but as I said before in my previous videos, I am not really concerned about this. Um, I do think that, um, you know, they're pretty expensive for what you're actually getting. Yes, here you do get three 10 times summon tickets for 3,000 paid visual, and that's a lot, you know. It's not even for limited content. And even if the vision card is limited, you know, it'll probably have a rerun. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, to be honest. Uh, it's not vital. Uh, 
and uh, what else do we have here yeah another crazy one that uh you know 5000 normal visual for uh, magicide that is just insane with a couple of keys so in this shop i'll probably avoid everything and i do think that this is also quite ludicrous 150 paid for uh, some great sword you know uh, items that you can farm normally i do think that is quite ludicrous even this one i wouldn't pay 150 free visual because there has been we've had these things for free in the past and maybe you know <laughs> i might you know i'll probably spend 150 gil on this why not and uh, moving on i don't think there's anything new in the shop so let's move on directly on to uh, the units that can be EXed this time around. So we have three units. So the first unit we want to have a look at is the lightning one, which is, Rav which is Ravies. Uh, what does Ravies have this time around in, t in terms of her EX? So from her nodes, we can see that she gets a bit of everything. There is no real focus on something specific. Uh, defense, agility, attack lock. She really does get um stat nodes spread across the board <laughs> literally speaking so i don't think there is a main focus on uh, trying to power up a specific stat in her regard now let's have a look at her skills the first skill you get a level 19 yes is um, simply cross enhancement and which will come blinding cross so deal damage medium to target within area around itself and chance of inflicting blind for three turn and raises own evasion rate for three turns so like i've been saying in a couple of communities i do think that ravies is mr sid uh, she seems to you know be a pretty good damage dealer she can equip the same things as sid but this time around there is an emphasis on her evasion she doesn't really have breaks per se but she's a ta she's an evade tank she has immortal spirit and uh, the first skill that she gets will increase her evasion top of blinding the enemy. Then we, if we have a look at her level job level 22 skill, she'll get Holy Knight Protection Enhancement, where she'll uh, get a further raise to her HP, Defense, and Hate. So that will pretty much make her uh, tank and uh, with emphasis to evade. And once she reaches job level 25, she'll... Uh, Get a skill that will inflict confusion for three turns to the enemy and reduce ap and i think that is pretty good uh, especially for pvp and some pve events where you probably be faced with really strong enemies that have their ap max and if you want to prevent them from doing some skills this is a really good way of doing so so uh, i do think that for selection quest it would be pretty good to have her uh, job level 25 then the next two units to look at are Kreis. So Kreis does get EX as well this time around. And in here we do see a strong emphasis on dexterity. She also has a node where you can increase her dexterity further and not by just a predetermined amount in the nodes. So I do believe that uh, there's an emphasis in uh, critical damage and uh, Let's have a look whether her skills do support that. So, uh, double shot will become double shot sharp, raises own critical damage, then deals two hit damage, medium to target, and lower own AP consumption for one turn upon critical hit. So, as I said, I think I was on the money here. Uh, her EX is quite focused on dealing critical damage and, if, you know, raising her chances of uh, doing critical. So I think she'll be pretty good in that regard. So um, I think if you pair her with the cloud that you know increases AP on critical, she'll be she wouldn't even need belt. You can give her her own TMR, which decreases her hate, and then she'll just pretty much flatten the the competition from the back row. Now let's have a look at her job level twenty two. So. Concentrate will become Concentrate Sharp, where her range will become plus two, and raises critical rate and lowers evasion rate. So, again, um, she doesn't seem to be... She has some luck, but not enough to make her evade. Um, if we have a look at her stats at the moment, so she has 215 dexterity and 182 luck. So, um, yeah, she will definitely not evade anything, especially keeping account that she's an MR unit. 
Now, her job level 25, uh, Knee Capper, will deal damage medium to target and piercing and lower jump, but, and will lower the enemy's jump by two for three turns upon critical. And, um, I don't know. This is quite interesting, you know, like, you probably need to figure out whether her other skills have job elevation, because if they don't, uh, there's no much point in doing her job 25 skill. Uh, you want to aim those units, you know, perhaps while they're high on the ground so that they can't do uh, big jumps to uh, reach your units or, you know, have craze cover a lot of ground to uh, and perhaps jump over obstacle to hit the enemies and prevent those enemies from jumping the obstacles that craze can. Then again, Grace only has jump one, so uh, I think the job level 25 skill would only be useful against Dragoons at Similia. Other than that, I don't think that's uh, <laughs> uh, that's a skill worth skilling up and worrying about. Uh, however, she'll be pretty good for uh, dealing critical damage, and as I said before, if uh, she's paired with Cloud, I think they'll be a pretty good duo. Now, let's have a look at uh, the spotlight unit, which is Glashella. Glashella does uh, get her EX as well this time around. And uh, there is a strong emphasis this time on uh, luck, attack, and dexterity. So uh, they're trying to make her a bit more tanky with max HP up, but that doesn't increase by much. I do see a lot of agility, luck, and dexterity, and some attack here. So... Perhaps a bit, you know, a bit more focused than Ravies, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, definitely she'll have a lot of accuracy with all the luck and dexterity she's getting. So uh, pretty good evade buster, I would say. Let's have a look at her stats now that she's level 85. She does have a lot of, a lot of luck and a little bit of dexterity. So uh, we'll see how she kills up once she reaches level 99 and then uh, level 120. Let's have a look at the job 19 skill, Leaf Strike Enhancement. Uh, that will become Leaf Strike Plus. The deal damage medium to target within area and around self after moving to target panel and lowers own AP consumption for three turns. That's pretty good. Uh, that will probably kind of, you know, not require her to wear belts if she's able to uh, build a lot of uh, AP. And then uh, moving closer to the target as well, you know, she, she can probably you know, deal a lot of um, damage and become a target. So kind of like a suicide, <laughs> kind of like a suicide unit. Let's see where Leap Strike is. Uh, let's have a look. Leap Strike, I haven't unlocked it yet. But yeah, that's like a cross pattern skill and AP 36. So oof, pretty, pretty expensive. But if it lowers AP cost, then, you know, you can just go close to the enemy and then be a suicide, <laughs> suicide unit and have, and have her other two companions clean up. Now let's have a look at our uh, job 25 skill, which is Stunning Thrust. Will deal damage large to target within range and chance of inflicting stun for one turn. And it's a very interesting pattern of attack, AoE, uh, but only close range. So uh, similar to, I think, one of Kilfe's attack, except the range is obviously minus one. Kilfe does damage in a 3x3 three three pattern, whereas this is a 3x2. And uh, yeah, stun is a pretty good ailment uh, you know stop the enemy it's pretty much a uh, weak disable well i would say yeah it's a disable and immobilize together so and it doesn't dispel on hit so pretty strong overall in terms of attack i think this will be a good follow-up from leafy strike if she survives after doing that <laughs> and uh, what else is there to talk about today uh, oh yeah there's challenges in challenges if you plan to get tune up You'll be able to uh, easily get shards for that vision card for the bing board and uh, yeah pretty much that's just really all there is to talk about today quick short video not much content to cover uh, however actually one thing i should have you know one of the more important things that i should have covered before we end the video is uh, you can actually get chris's uh, mind sphere through the ex quest I did the Brutal difficulty, which is actually pretty hard. I did auto it, but um, I didn't have a very optimal team, but I still managed to auto it. But I didn't have the right vision cards. It was just like autoed vision cards, and I forgot to assign the adequate one. 
Whereas I tried the Nightmare difficulty and that's definitely hard. I think this one needs to be manual. Um, this was the team I was working with. Um, so I think you might need a bit more tweaking and um, manually if you ask me. And yeah, I believe that is all. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We'll uh, see you at the next video. So on Monday we have uh, a Battle Royale video. And if you're keen for the World of Division new content overview videos, that will be in next Wednesday. All right, guys, and enjoy the content. I hope you're able to beat whatever you need to beat. And uh, if you want to build up craze, hopefully that won't be too painful for you. All right. You guys take care and have a good one. Bye for now.